When our society discusses issues politely, with each side seeking a peaceful resolution, everyone benefits. When the discussion is a highly polarized shouting match between people who just don't listen to each other, well, it's time for some roasted opinions. YouTube is a great platform for independent content, but it is also a business. They need to make money, and that comes from AdSense. YouTube also shares ad revenues with the content creators, which means more new channels and more new content. Running ads on offensive content will make the advertisers pull out, though. They advertise on YouTube to increase sales, not kill their brand. On the other hand, monetized content creators are businesses, too. They operate on spec, making and posting content to the platform, hoping that ads will run. When controversial content causes advertisers to pull out, YouTube loses a lot of potential revenue and every content creator feels a small part of that pinch because there are fewer ads to run. When YouTube removes AdSense from creators or removes the video entirely to prevent this, the content creator bears the cost of that decision. YouTube may feel the impact of lost advertisers, but the impact on the individual content creator can be devastating. In order to avoid these problems, YouTube takes steps to curate the content posted on their platform. This is a tall order since YouTube receives about 600,000 hours of uploaded content per day and climbing. It would take a huge number of employees to manually review all of that content and cost the company billions of dollars. So YouTube uses algorithms to optimize their content, which, please remember, is really about optimizing their revenue stream. And this is where the wheels come off. I first learned about the latest change from H3H3, a fun channel to which I am subscribed. The first notification wasn't a YouTube video though, it was a tweet. I say a tweet, but it was actually more of a storm of tweets. A Twitter hurricane, really. Content creators really, really didn't like YouTube's latest optimization change. According to YouTube, they are now changing the way the subscriber feed works. Instead of placing videos from the channels to which you are subscribed in chronological order with the newest video on top, they are arranging the feed to personalize it to the individual. This has the potential to bury the latest videos from channels which YouTube deems to be problematic. Naturally, that will suppress the views for those videos, the interactions for those videos, the ad count for those videos, the AdSense revenue for those videos. Basically, this could potentially kill some channels. Algorithms aren't human beings and they aren't artificial intelligence. They scan the content for certain words and images and either permit or block monetization. There is nothing subjective about this process because algorithms are incapable of being subjective. There are already lots of reasons that the algorithms bury videos in other feeds. The ray of hope for many channels was the subscriber feed. Subscribers could always find that new content. That helped to increase views and to keep channels going. YouTube also has the notification bell. Ring it if you always want to know that a channel has a new video. This allows subscribers to hear about new content. YouTube has modified the notification bell so that subscribers have to choose whether to always be notified or only sometimes. I don't know why they made that feature. It kind of defeats the purpose of the bell. Since YouTube is now curating what shows up in the subscriber feed, demonetized creators might as well give up on either their channels or the platform, right? Um, no. Just, no. We are at the tipping point now. Some pretty big channels with years of profitable content are slowly disappearing. Not because the creators are burnt out or because they always post offensive content, or because they gave up on production quality. No, they seem to be disappearing because YouTube's algorithms create a closed feedback loop which only the subscriber feed allows these creators to survive. And now that is gone too. So as a brand new, tiny little channel, I feel bold enough to make the following suggestions to YouTube and to creators both. Mostly because I don't really have much to lose here. This channel just launched. I'm not monetized. I don't have a huge audience expecting to see a new video every week, and I'm not expecting to show up in anyone's random feed. If my channel gets the ban hammer from YouTube, I haven't lost much except the time I've spent making a few videos, and I've gained a lot of friends. So, YouTube, you have a communication problem with content creators, and vice versa, but it can be solved. 
First, YouTube needs to leave the subscriber feeds as originally set up. Most recent video on top, uncurated. Second, YouTube should remove the notification bell entirely and notify every subscriber for a channel every time that channel publishes a new video. Third, YouTube needs to take a look at how their algorithms are interacting with each other, just like a doctor or pharmacist needs to take a look at possible drug interactions. If the algorithms are creating a feedback loop, then this needs to be fixed. Fourth, and this is really important, YouTube really needs to reconsider their silent rollouts. At the very least, partner program creators should be advised of pending changes directly by email long before those changes are implemented so that they have a chance to discuss their concerns privately with YouTube before the changes take effect. This is a friendlier, more professional method of communicating with content creators and will strengthen the platform. Fifth, YouTube needs to fix the review process. The algorithms should look at uploaded content scheduled to publish as well as that already published. If these videos get flagged by the algorithms, then they need to be reviewed by a human being to confirm the flag. The same can be done for videos that are flagged by viewers. If YouTube needs to demonetize or block content, then they should specify in their notice to the creator exactly what the problem is and provide a timestamp for the offending content. Not just this is a violation of our community guidelines, but actually which guidelines this content violates and where in the video it is. The creator can fix the specific issues in the video and then resubmit the edited video and get it reviewed again. If there are no more issues, the video could be monetized. This would be a better system in my humble opinion, especially if reviews happen on scheduled content before it publishes. Creators could fix their videos before they lose views and ads. They could also use scheduling publication to get the review done before they lose money. It all means that YouTube has to communicate better with creators, big and small. Creators also need to communicate with YouTube better. This is on all of us, platform and creators alike. We need to talk to each other directly, and not in public forums like Twitter that make the company and creators both look bad, especially to advertisers. As for content creators, I would suggest that if YouTube is willing to create a better business environment for us, then we should work to make their job easier. If YouTube creates a reliable method to allow creators to resolve issues with, with video content, then we should communicate with them directly instead of blasting out complaints on social media. What we want to do as a community working together is realize YouTube is a business and they have a right to run their business for profit. Content creators are all businesses functioning as contractors for YouTube. If we are monetized, we have a right to make money off of our videos as well. YouTube needs to make sure that we know what the problems they have with our content is. And we need to make sure that we are addressing those concerns. This is not about fighting with the platform that we all use, nor is this about crushing the content creators that are providing you with 600,000 hours per day of content for free. A lot of that content is not going to be monetized, but some of it is. And YouTube is selling ad space on that content. That's how YouTube makes their money. That's how the content creators make their money. If we can't get together and work to make money cooperatively, then I can understand why the advertisers have a problem with placing ads on our content. It's perfectly normal for them to have concerns about the quality of the content on which their ads are being placed. Like I said before, they come to YouTube to buy ad space because it will increase sales for their company. It will increase distribution for their products. It will increase awareness for the issues that they are trying to raise. If we can all do this, then advertisers will be happy and place more ads. YouTube and YouTube's content creators will be happy with increased revenues and more monetized content on which to run those ads. This is a win-win situation. Or is that win-win-win? Either way, it's a good thing. Now, that's just my opinion, and you don't have to agree with it. In fact, I'd love to hear what your opinion is, so go ahead and like or dislike this video. 
If you have something to say, leave a comment and continue the discussion. If you are interested in hearing what other opinions I have, click the button and ring the bell. New videos post every Saturday at noon central, so watch this space.